Here it is, guys. Finally, 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 I got my Hanway Practical XL. I've been waiting for this guy, I gotta say, for since the summer. I mean, it's, uh, it's never in stock. I mean, this has gotta be probably the most wanted uh, katana you can find. Uh, you can check out videos up the wazoo on YouTube regarding this sword. I mean, uh, back, Backyard uh, Samurai loves this sword. He has, I think, two or three iterations of it. I think he has still the first iteration of it and he still loves it. Beats the crap out of it, never dies. It's a wonderful sword. It is, it's, it's definitely a beast. This thing is a beast. It really is. I mean, just take a look at it. I mean, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, I mean, it's built, the, the geometry of this sword is built for one reason, one reason, to cut and to uh, cause damage, <laughs> basically. And it's durable. I mean, it, it'll take, take, uh, take a beat in this thing. It's not, the adornments of this sword is not the best. I mean, it's, it's a very plain Jane sword, hence the name, you know, practical, XL. XL meaning, obviously, extra large. Uh, it's got, it's basically part of Hanway's uh, Practical Excel's uh, geometries profiles for like perform their performance series cutters. Um, a couple of their swords have the same type of geometry, but I think this honestly is probably has the most size or the most girth um, in the blade. Uh, you have anything that is labeled XL with Hanway has basically this type of geometry. But this one is uh, the Practical line where it, um, gives you a very cost effective solution to give you a, a beautiful blade and a beautiful cutting sword in terms of performance by not giving you the price of like their high echelon uh, katanas that Hanway makes. Uh, so it's it's kind of a blend of both worlds, which is pretty good. All right, so you got these two swords. This is all kind of bling blinged out. All right, you have, you know, beautiful dormants. I mean, these are kind of, I look at these as more or less like pieces of art, okay? Uh, they were custom swords. I picked the pieces. I picked the color schemes And this is basically what I've been doing uh, in terms of how I started my collection and going with these custom shops So I kind of ignored Hanway for a little while until I realized that you know Hanway's the real deal and they make some really really good products I mean uh, the higher price ones I may not go with for a while, but um, the practical excels I just basically I've been having my eye on them for, for a long time when I look at this sword the Kashira that's just basically a plain uh, iron piece, couple little details in there and all that. The Suba is also just a bit basically a plain iron piece. I mean, it's nothing that flashy. When I look at this sword, it kind of takes me back to feudal Japan, okay, to the time of the samurai. I just feel like this is the way a real katana looked back then. Uh, I can imagine like, uh, you know these these smiths in these uh in japan basically racking out these swords for battle and giving them out to the samurais and all that and i i just have a feeling like this is the way it would look you know plain shiny glossy uh saya nothing crazy segeo wrap okay ready to basically be tied up put into uniform uh just a, a plain iron pounded guard okay a nice tight ito okay imitation leather or whatever you want whatever they put on it silk uh, it's just it's just a plain uh, type of sword, but performance was there. I mean, it was very well made. It's tight, and it was made for one purpose, and that's to basically, like I said, to cut and do damage. Okay, and that's basically what it is. This thing is tight. Okay, I mean, honestly, I mean, it just oh, hit the ceiling. I mean, it honestly, doesn't it doesn't fall? It doesn't fall at all. I mean, you really gotta you do the thumb thing. It's you need a lot of pressure to get this thing out. It really is. It's really tight in there, which is not really a bad thing because through time, it's going to basically uh, start loosening up. So how, getting it tight is not really, really a bad thing. But I got to tell you, look, look at this beast of a sword. Okay, look at this beast of a sword. Is that beautiful or is that beautiful? I've been waiting for a sword with this type of girth and this type of width and this type of geometry for a very long time. Ever since I started looking at videos uh, about the, with this sword, um, I mean, you could. There's a ton of them out there, 
but uh, specifically backyard uh, samurai. He loves his sword. He has a lot of cutting tests with it. Um, he's just he's, he's cut like ban like dry bamboo with it. He's cut some crazy stuff with it, and I gotta tell you, I mean, the blade takes takes a beating, and it you doesn't show much damage on it. Um, basically, the blade is uh, 1566 differentially hardened steel. It's uh, sort of like a spring steel. Um, it's overall, it's 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 a heavy sword. It really is. It's a heavy sword. The point of balance is probably somewhere around, yeah, sort of around five inches. So I think it's it's pretty much makes sense, probably right around there. But uh, basically, as far as it being heavy, it's still very balanced in the hand. I mean, it just kind of. I mean, as far as a swing, it definitely. It's definitely heavy in the hands, but it's very manageable. It's very controllable. So it just, you could feel the weight, okay, in your swing. You could feel the weight, basically what it would be hitting an object. I mean, it's that type of geometry this blade. So basically whatever they say about it is definitely true. Sort of some ripples in the blade. It's not perfectly straight as you would want it to be but it's it does the job it's i mean i think honestly i think the blade is beautiful so let's actually go into some close-ups and go into uh piece by piece with the blade to show you what it looks like all right so the first thing that we are going to start with is the the suka okay so now the suka is uh 11.3 inches I measure. I measured. I did my own measurements at 11.3 inches. I think it was a little bit smaller on the website, but my particular rendition of this came out about 11.3 inches. The uh, Ito, the Ito wrap is fairly tight. I mean, there's been a a word with Han, with Hanway as far as people complaining that the Ito is not that tight, that uh, it could be a little tighter. But I gotta tell you, I'm actually pretty impressed at the tightness of the Zito. I mean, it's not, uh, it's definitely feels good in the hand. It's, um, the ray skin looks pretty good. It is a little wide in the hand. I mean, if you look at the suka, basically the thickness, the depth of the, of the suka is about 0.9 inches and the width is about one inch, uh, 1.47 inch, 1.4 inches. So it's definitely, it's it's got a lot of beef to it, this, this, this uh, the suka, this handle, it's definitely got a lot of beef to it, but you can definitely get your get a nice grip on it, okay, without feeling like uh, you have um, you still have have control with it. But you know, you have to understand, it's just an overall very heavy blade. It's a heavy sword altogether, so that's basically what you're dealing with. It's a heavy cutter, so you know you're going to basically be hitting heavy targets with it. I ha I can't wait to actually start cutting. I haven't cut with this yet, but I can't wait to start cutting tatami mats with this thing. I think it's going to go to it like. Uh, hot knife through butter. I mean, that's basically the type of sword it is. I would actually be curious to see how this sword uh, handles lighter targets like water bottles and pool noodles and things like that. I've seen other people do it and you know, I, I'm pretty confident they'll, uh, well, I'm not the best best cutter in the world. So, you know, I have, I'm learning as I cut, but I'm pretty confident it's gonna get through, uh, it's gonna pretty much get through anything that I throw at it. I did a, light, a little cutting test out of the box. Um, it, you know, right out of the box, it cut paper pretty well. I think it could be a little, little bit sharper. I may tone it up eventually, but I'm gonna basically start cutting with it as is out of the box to just show, just to show you basically what it could do out of the box without having to uh, need to uh, cut, you know, sharpen it right away. I mean, obviously, as you start cutting with it, you're always gonna have to start sharp sharpening. Um, I did pick up the workshop uh, with the blade grinder and. Um, I did give that a shot on one of my swords, um, and it seems a very promising product, so I'll probably do something with that, review with that uh, eventually as well. But uh, there's definitely a lot of things out there that you can use to uh, hone and sharpen your blades. But out of the box, I want to start cutting with this thing and show you basically what it can do. But I think it, it has the right sharpness and the right geometry that I think out of the box, it's going to cut you know whatever you throw at it. So now the Minuki, okay. The Minuki basically is, um, it's a little flowery type of pattern. I think it's uh, it's got some great little, it's got a little, great little cast of detail. I mean, listen, Hanway is very known for basically giving you simple, simple pieces, but they can be detailed and done very well. And I think that's what, what you get in the Minuki of this, uh, the Minuki from this sword. Even the Kashira basically, it doesn't, it's a very plain, 
type of plain plain Kashira, but it has so, a couple of little details in it uh, around the wrap that I think look great. Looks great. I mean, I just love the look of the simple pieces. I I mean, I've never had a simple piece type of sword because uh, I've always been into basically a custom type of swords. But I'm I am in love with basically how this sword looks. I really I really am. The Fuchi, the termination between the Fuchi and the Ito is okay. Um, the Ito wrap overlaps it a little bit. Um, it could have been a little bit tighter, but I gotta tell you for what they charge you for this, I mean, I think it's done very well. I mean, overall, everything is very tight, very done extremely well. Then you have the Suba. The Suba kind of looks like it's, it's, it's been, you can actually see the, the hammer marks. I think they did that on purpose. Like you could actually see the hammer marks in the Suba. It's just a plain iron Suba, nothing crazy, but crazy tight, very solid, looks fantastic. What impressed me the most, if you look at the Seppa, it, what impressed me was the fact that they grinded the Seppa down to not overlap the holes of the Suba. Now you really rarely ever see that it done in a sword. I mean, that's actually, I'm very impressed at this, this price that they actually grinded that down so it lines up with the Suba and it doesn't overlap the, the holes that were made in the Suba. I think that was, I was very, very impressed by that. And that was extremely, extremely well done that they did that. And it just, it just helps with the whole aesthetic of a, the simple look of the sword. So with the Suka, basically it's uh, the, the actual Ito wrap is sort of be sort of like an, they say, they call it like an imitation leather. It's more like a suede type of material. Uh, I've never had a material like this. Uh, most of it is silk or the, like uh, the imitation silk or the cotton. It has, it definitely has a different feel to it. I think it feels very soft in the hand. It's very easy to grip and hold. I think it's going to be able to, uh, to give you good grip uh, throughout all your swings and all that. Um, but I'll give you the, I'll give you the sniff test. It's some kind of animal, but uh, it's, it's an imitation, some kind of an imitation leather, but uh, it does the job. I think it feels, it feels really good in the hand. So now if you go to the Habaki, okay. Habaki has like a, um, kind of like a, uh, like a tiger's claw type of scratch, uh, scratches over it to give you that little, little bit more of an aesthetic. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, it, it's a plain Habaki, but I think it's, it's done very well. I mean, it, it's shaped very well. It's got a, a nice adornment with the scratches on it. I think it's fantastic. I love it. I actually love the way it looks. I, I like the sabaki they put on it. I think it's actually a little different than when they had on the website. Didn't have these like little like tiger marks on it, which is kind of pretty cool. I mean, I, I, I got to read, read you out these numbers on this blade. All right, so basically from the, the Motohaba, the Motohaba, the, the, the width you know, at the towards the guard of the blade is at 1.43 inches. 1.43 inches. Now, a standard width, okay, towards the habaki of a standard katana is at about 1.2 inches. So, I mean, that's how much bigger and how, how much more girth this this blade has. So now, if you go all the way down to the uh, yakoti, the yakoti, the width at the yakoti is about 1.8 inches. Okay, 1.0, oh, actually 1.08 inches to be exact. So I mean the width really kind of stays with the blade all the way down to the yukote. That's what makes it such an amazing cutter because basically when you're cutting, okay, this part of the blade, okay, is what actually does most of the cutting and you have a lot of the width there. Now also it's got a slim profile. The actual thickness is actually 0.9 inches, okay? So basically it's got a slim profile, it's got a very wide blade all the way down and that's what makes this thing a sick bastard cutter. It really does. Couple more things about the blade. The blade itself is about 28.3 inches. Uh, so it's got a, and that's actually from the, from the habaki or the little, little trim, trim on the habaki all the way down to the point is about 28.3 inches. It's got a great size to it. The Kisaki is about 1.7 inches, okay, from the Yakote all the way down. It's got nice geometry also made up, okay, in the, the Yakote. I think that was done very, very well. What I like about this blade, if you look at the, it's got a couple different tones to it. So if you look at the Shinobi line, okay, it's got like a diff, like a shine into a gray, and then the, the, the Hamon is a natural Hamon, which is actually really nice as well. 
Uh, so it actually has a couple different beautiful tones to it. So no matter, you know, depending on how you hold it into the light, you have uh, like a matte to a glossy type of finish, which, which really makes this a really good looking blade. I think this is probably one of the most good looking blades I have. I mean, I have some mirror polish blades. I've never had a blade quite like this. And I think it's, uh, I, I'm very fond of this, the way it looks. I really, I'm digging it. I am, I really am. So like I said, the blade is uh, 1566. It's a differentially hardened spring type of steel. The um, hardness level, the HRC hardness level is at about 60 and the spine the HRC hardness level is about 40, which means it's, it's the, the hardness level 60 is fantastic. And it, can, it means it will basically be able to take a good cut but also be able to have, uh, it's tempered in a way where it'll, it'll be able to also give a little bit. It, it is spring steel, so it may, <clears throat> it's not gonna, it, it, if it takes a bend, it'll go back into place again for the most part. Uh, that's why it's, it's uh, they made this in spring steel for a performance type of cutter, which is great. Um, I've seen ton of video, tons of videos, and I've, I've seen people do some crazy stuff with these swords, and, uh, it definitely takes hits well, and it doesn't take much damage. So I'm actually really looking forward to seeing what this thing could do. Then you have the Sori, uh, the Sori, the, the natural bend of the sword. Okay, basically I measured it at about 1.1 inches, okay? It has a bend, but not as much as a, uh, another a, a other sword that geometries, okay? I think, I'll, honestly, it's a little straighter. Uh, it's a long, heavy, straighter type of blade. And I think honestly, this is all goes into play in making it a very good performance cutter. The overall weight of the blade is about uh, two pounds, 11 ounces. Uh, I measured, and that's pretty much what it says on the website. So I think it's, uh, I think we're pretty much spot on with that. Uh, the overall length of the blade in the Saya is at about the 43.6 inches, 43 and a half inches, okay? The entire length of it. I gotta tell you, it's just a plain glossy Saya. Takes fingerprints, it's a fingerprint magnet. I mean, I, I kinda, I hate that, but I mean, when you polish it, this thing up and display it <clears throat> and save it and look at it, I mean, it is a beautiful sword. Again, it's just a plain uh, type of Saya. It's got, some ripples basically in in the saya it's not perfectly straight but it's it's you know a couple little scratches even on the blade i mean it came with a couple little scratches nothing too crazy i'm not going to complain about everything i mean these things can't come perfect you know corrugata is just a basic corrugata it doesn't have the little brass things here that come out which is great i'm glad they eliminated that because you don't need it the uh segeo wrap is uh it's not shoelace material it's not you know, Japanese silk, but it's definitely serviceable. It looks great. I love it the way it's tied. They didn't give the knot because honestly, <laughs> they, you buy it and they just, they know that you're gonna basically take it and just it's ready to play with. I mean, it's this this sword was pretty much made for the martial artist. I mean, it's uh, it's made for these schools that cut and do practice cutting, Tamashigiri and all that. It's made to come out of the box and basically start having fun with it, start cutting with it for the practitioner. And that's basically what this sword is made for. And for the price you pay for it, you know, I got this thing from uh, Sword and Armory. Uh, that was the only place where I was able to get it in stock. Uh, Colt of Atina never has it in stock. I mean, you're lucky if you have it in stock and be able to put it into your cart and buy it because it's, it's just, I've been trying to get this thing honestly since, since the beginning of the summer. So I happened to uh, look at Sword and Armory and it, it was in stock. I put it into my cart and then they called me up and said, listen, it's, uh, it was sold before it was updated, the system was updated. So they said, oh, they're gonna restock it at a certain date. So I waited for it, it wasn't too long. I finally, you know, I got my little beast. Uh, great company, like Colt of Atina, where you're physically able to call and speak to someone in the States, I mean, is huge. I mean, dealing with a lot of these, uh, these companies in China through email, you know, for the most part it works, but you have that leg, but to be able to be able to, you know, just kind of, pick up the phone and be able to call these people. That just brought the customer service up to another level to be able to uh, to have that ability to call them and be able to talk to them, have them uh, talk about the order and be able to communicate back and forth. I think that was fantastic. Uh, but um, I had a great experience with Sword and Armory. I mean, I would definitely shop from them again. Uh, I also picked up from them a uh, Tamashigiri uh, uh, tata uh, tatami stand 
which was pretty good quality. So I'm waiting for that to come in, and that's where I'm going to test this this uh, little bad boy out with it, uh, with some tatami mats. So uh, I'll show you that one once I get it too. All right. So basically, I gave you a uh, a quick review of the sword. I don't know how quick it was, but it was a review, and. Uh, only because I think it deserves it. I think it's a great sword and I wanted to talk about it a little bit first. So now I'm basically going to attempt to cut with this thing. Let's see if it's a little bit more beast than beauty, okay? And uh, then I'm gonna come back to you and give you uh, a final, uh, you know, my final basically overall review of this sword in terms of uh, how I felt like it cut, how it felt in the hand, and uh, an overall opinion of, of uh, the Practical XL, which uh, I'm loving it right now without even cutting a, a thing with it so far. Um, I cut some paper with it, but that doesn't count. Paper can't fight back. Uh, but basically, um, I'm gonna start cutting with it, and uh, let's see how it does. So, let's get at it. 